and there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. One man, one microphone, one mission, one message. True News, the only newscast reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And now for the most powerful hour on radio, here is End Time Newsman, Rick Wiles. This is True News, one hour of uncensored news, views, and commentary. Welcome to the program. I'm Rick Wiles. I have two interviews for you today. First, Palestinian Christian Hazem Faraj will tell us how Jesus is appearing to Muslims in dreams and visions. And later in the program, I'm going to rebroadcast a very informative interview I had years ago with Dr. Todd Elsner about the dangerous toxic effects of mercury in vaccines. Now, before I introduce my first guest, I must tell you that persecution against Christians in America went to a new level today. The Pentagon released a statement confirming that American soldiers accused of sharing their Christian faith with other soldiers could be prosecuted under military law. Pentagon officials appointed by Barack Obama have been holding meetings with Jewish atheists, Activist Mikey Weinstein, founder of the Military Religious Freedom Foundation. Mr. Weinstein claims that Christians in the military, including chaplains, are guilty of treason for sharing their Christian faith among fellow soldiers. He has described Christians in the armed forces as enemies of the Constitution. The Jewish atheist has also described Christian witnessing in the military as an act of spiritual rape on par with serious crimes such as sexual assaults. Under the new Obama policy, American soldiers who dare to tell other soldiers about their faith in Jesus Christ risk being convicted in a court-martial, as would a soldier convicted of treason, murder, rape, or any other serious crime. Court-martial punishment may include imprisonment in a military correctional institution or dishonorable discharge from the military and loss of pension and benefits. Keep in mind that this new anti-Christian policy of Barack Obama will apply to chaplains, too. Therefore, ordained ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ serving in the U.S. armed forces as chaplains to soldiers could possibly face a court-martial conviction for openly sharing their Christian faith with other soldiers. The big question is, how will American Christians respond to this threat of criminal prosecution for sharing their faith in the armed forces. I will share my thoughts about the appropriate Christian response in my next email newsletter that will be released tomorrow. If you are not a subscriber, go to truenews.com right now and enter your email address in the box in the upper right-hand corner, and you will be the first to know how I think Christians should respond to this threat of criminal prosecution for sharing your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, after this scripture reading from Max McLean, Palestinian Christian Hazem Faraj will join me in the program later. Dr. Elsner, uh, Dr. Elsner will tell us about the dangers of mercury in vaccines. You're listening to True News. You're listening to True News, the end time newscast. Rick will return after this announcement. This is Max McLean. In the midst of tribulation, where can we find strength to carry on? Listen to the Bible from James 1. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. From James 1. Listen to the Bible. It's great for the soul. 
The Listener's Bible may be a great way to help you devote more time in God's Word. Now you can download the Bible directly to your computer. To hear more, go to radiobible.org. Well, you're listening to True News, your Christian alternative source for global news, analysis, and commentary. Our web address is truenews.com, T-R-U-N-E-W-S, truenews.com. And our mailing address is Post Office Box 690069, Vero Beach, Florida. The zip code is 32969. And, by the way, if you've not signed up for our new free uh online newsletter. I would encourage you to do it. And right at the top of our, our website, at the upper right-hand corner, there's a place for you to enter your email address. It's absolutely free. Sign up today, and uh, you'll be receiving my personal email newsletter sent out several times a week. So again, it's at the top of the website, truenews.com. Uh, you know, uh, last month it was in early early April. Uh, I was I was reading the the online edition of the Jerusalem Post, and I read an article entitled "Ex Muslim Preaches the Gospel: Palestinian Convert to Christianity Hosts Evangelical TV Show." And I got to say, the Jewish newspaper in Jerusalem wrote an amazingly positive and balanced article on the Christian ministry of 27-year-old Hazim Faraj. Uh, Hazim is the host of the TV program Reflections, and it's seen on a number of, of television networks here in the United States and other parts of the world. His website is hazimfaraj.com. That's H-A-Z-E-M-F-A-R-R-A-J.com. So, Hazim, welcome to True News. Glad to have you on the program today. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's good to be with you. What an honor. Yes, sir. And, you know, uh, you know, Jerusalem, the Jerusalem Post really did a, a, a very fair and, and balanced article about your ministry. I was I was pleased to see that in, in the newspaper in Jerusalem. Uh, they didn't slam you. They didn't criticize you. It was a very nice article uh, about yeah. about a, a, a Palestinian who converted to Christianity and, and is now being used by the Lord to uh, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So um, let's uh, let's start at the beginning and and uh, just uh, tell us about y- your life and um, how you came to know Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. I'm I'm really honored and and truly thankful for it. Um, well, my story starts out in you know, I was born in 1984 in Brooklyn, New York, and as my father grew in years. At the age of 12, he was taking me uh, and the family back to Jerusalem. Now, we're, we're ethnically, we're Palestinian. So I'm an American citizen, but I'm an Arab-American. Uh, as my father grew in age, he, his convictions of Islam got more and more stricter, and he got more spiritual, or more religious, Islamically. So the best thing for him to do was to invest in us here in the, in the state and also it came to a point where he decided that, that that wouldn't be enough, and he wanted to remove us from the American Christian culture. And that's when, at the age of 12, we moved to Jerusalem. Uh, if you're familiar with the Jerusalem politics, the Arabs occupy the um, eastern eastern side of Jerusalem, the Jews occupy the western side, so it's split. And uh, the politics in the situation just put me on the eastern side of, the, of, of Jerusalem. Now, we, our desire, our plan, my intention truly was to become a better Muslim. You know that I don't. I don't know that uh, any Muslim ever really doubts Islam when they're pursuing Islam. It's actually even today. I was talking to a friend of mine, and I said, I, you know, I just have to pitch myself to see because sometimes I'm. I, I sit there in awe. Am I really a Christian? And am I really preaching the gospel of Jesus that I was taught for so many years was 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 uh, false and wrong and uh, an abomination per the the Prophet Muhammad and the Islamic religion? So, so my my journey started really when I started going to the mosque. I went to the Dome of the Rock many many times. I went to the to the mosque in Beit Hanina, which is uh, about 2.8 miles no, uh, north of Jerusalem, the old city. And we, I just did it, you know. Every 
every good Muslim prays five times a day. I'll have to be honest. I prayed four times because I was too lazy to get up the, the early morning prayers. And uh, But I made it up every day. And I read my Quran. I memorized my verses, went to school. Uh, we had a religious class every day of the week. And that's just what you did. Now, with my situation, I actually began expecting answers from Allah and from Islam. And, you know, I wasn't really demanding much. I was just demanding things that religion is supposed to give you. I was demanding things like peace and hope and love and uh, faith, you know, in God and inspiration. But I was not getting it. And so I started asking these really difficult questions because I would pray uh, Islamically and I would go to the mosque and yet I would leave the mosque and I would finish my prayers worse than I had began. And it, it just it culminated in a crisis in my heart. Um, a, a Muslim never converts overnight. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really lengthy process. Now, uh, I know Muslims who have converted overnight because of miraculous situations, dreams and visions, healing, stuff like that. But for the most part, many Muslims, it's a process. And so for me, that was my process. My process was seeking the answers from Islam and being utterly destroyed when those things were not available. You know, the peace, the hope, the faith, the love, and all that. So I started, at the time, I got, I started questioning and doubting Islam. And in essence, I was doubting my, my culture because my culture is so intertwined with Islamic doctrine and religion and culture. It, it just... There's no separation of Islam and, and the culture over there, at least in the Palestinian sides. And so, um, I, at the time I started, it was really hard, I'll be honest with you. It was, it was a, I call it my personal crisis. And right about that time, about a year and a half into that crisis, the Lord would put Christian missionaries on the second floor of our building. Now this made me. This was even more of a disaster for me because here were the infidels, the people that were, you know, helping uh, destroy Islam. So we were told, you know, uh, here were the people of the book Islamically. That's what Christians are labeled um, because they they had changed and falsified the true word of God, which was the Quran, per my my culture and my teachings, you know. And so they were they were were really, really happy, and I call them happy people because they were they were just genuinely happy. And the things that I was seeking within Islam, I started noticing in them. They smiled all the time. They were very nice people. They were happy. They had peace. They had love. They loved me, you know. And so, because of that, because of that, uh, because of their Christ-like actions towards my family and myself, I thought. I need to evangelize them Islamically. I need to do some da'wah to them um, and bring them to Islam because they have good characteristics and what a shame and what an embarrassment that would be if, if this good, kind Christian family went to hell. Now, I didn't really, in my heart, I, I, I didn't... I, looking back, it was my survival mechanism to, to try to hold on to Islam. I thought... If I can convert them to Islam, then maybe my doubts and my crisis in Islam would be alleviated. But that's not the case. And instead, what what ended up happening is I I went upstairs to the second floor. Mind you, the humor of God. We 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 go from the United States to Jerusalem, halfway around the world, to run into Christians in a time of crisis of faith. You know, Hasim, how how old were you at that time? Well, we, we got there at, I was there, in, I was 12 years old, and I met them at about 13 years old. So it, it was, it was a, the process at the time was, in, to be honest with you, I don't know exactly the, the timeline as mm -hmm. per when I met them, but it was between my 13 and 13 and a half, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, but the, the, had, the joy and the peace that, was seen in the lives of these Christian missionaries living in the same apartment building in Jerusalem. That's what that's what was uh, infecting you and 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 puzzling you. You you saw these yeah. people with joy, with peace, with happiness, and you thought this would 
this can't be right. Um, I, I've got to I've got to straighten them out and bring them to Islam. Yeah, and and you know it wasn't just an apartment building; it was my father's apartment building. So That's my a... father who took us away from the from the American Christian culture. And God just... God sent Christians to to the very building your father owned. Yeah, it, it really is. It's kind of humorous. It wasn't humorous when I was going through it. It was a, it, it was my my disaster, my crisis. But nonetheless, it happened, and the Lord used my father to to start that journey. And I call them happy Christians because Jesus truly was so alive in their lives that they they the love that that Jesus had put into their hearts was so evident. Uh, Hazim, and, did, did did you um, keep? Uh, contact with those missionaries, or, 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 you know, have you lost contact with them over the years? Oh yeah, no, I still, I mean, I am very much in contact. With okay, them. so much so that when at seventeen, when I had to leave home, I went, I reconnected with them. You know, so they they took me in and they adopted me pretty much, uh, not not officially, but they they put their life where their preach was. You know, they they took me in, and That's... I'm. That's good because you know I, what I'm thinking. You know, is, is that here's here's this uh, you know these missionaries, uh, and, and they were they Americans? Did, is that what you said? They were American missionaries. Uh, the 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 father of the house was a Palestinian born again believer, and his wife was American. Okay, uh, yeah. but but uh, you know God was using them, and and at the time they had no idea. Uh, how they're just living their daily life for Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. how it was impacting uh, a young man, 12, 13, 14 years old, who later in life would become the host of an international Christian television ministry. And, and, and that's that's what is so wonderful about, about how God works in our lives. And we just, all of us, we need to just look at this example and, and be aware that uh, sometimes we, we're not, you know, we're just not, uh, we don't understand what's going on in our lives. But if we're just obedient to the Lord, if we simply will be in the place he wants us to be and do what we're supposed to do and be content in our circumstances, we need to leave it up to the Lord uh, to yeah. to show us later in life what he was doing in that situation at that time. And it had nothing to do with us. It has something to do with the people around us. And in, in this case, it was your life. And God God could was looking into the future, and He saw Hazim Faraj as a as an as an evangelist someday. Yeah. Uh, he, he was He was looking into the future and seeing you as as a as a preacher of the gospel. And and, and yet that missionary couple had no idea that this is what God was doing. It's just a wonderful yeah. way, the, the, you know, the way the Lord works in the lives of people. Yeah, and you know what's interesting is when, when Jesus was washing the, the feet of the disciples before the, he was about to be crucified, uh, Peter said, Lord, you, you will not wash my feet. And the Lord said to him, one translation said, Jesus looks at Peter and says, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but soon you will. That's and right. That crisis time in my life, I didn't understand it. The missionaries didn't understand it. But here I am. Now, you know, it's one thing for a Muslim to leave Islam and to become a Christian. It's a whole different ball game when that Muslim comes out of the of of hiding and tells the world. Because I mean, every, it, every person, every person who who believes in the name of Jesus is required to confess with his or her mouth that he or she believes on the name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. You yeah. can't hide it. You, your, your mouth must confess your belief in Jesus Christ. Because if you're a closet secret Christian, you're not a Christian. It's mm-hmm. as simple as that. If you're unwilling to take a stand and and risk persecution because of your faith in Jesus Christ, well, then I don't think you're a Christian. So so in your case, you at some point, tell us, uh, Hazim, you know, what... what when was it that you you came to the place of believing on the name of Jesus, and then what happened when you told others? Well, um, for me, I, I believed in January of the year two thousand, so this would have been three years after I actually moved to Jerusalem. And I said to the to the missionaries, I said, I said, I think I want to, and my intention was to say I want to become a Christian, but I had been so programmed 
not to even think that way. It was difficult for me to even confess that. And so uh, for about 30 to 40 minutes, I was trying to say to this man, I want to become a... And I, I just could... The word Christian could not come out of my mouth. Finally, he got fed up and he said, Hazem, I have to go. If you don't have... If you don't... If you don't muster up the courage to say what you're about to say, then this conversation is over. And finally, with every ounce of energy that I could muster up, I said, I want to become a Christian, you know. And so his response to me, it was like, it was, it was like, lead, you know, just that, 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 that heavy words. His response to me said, he's a Hazen, I will help you, but you have to promise me one thing. And I said, what's that? He said, you have to promise not to tell a soul until the Lord, you know, opens that opportunity. I said, brother, trust me, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm in no hurry. Well, the change happened so deeply within my life, people began to notice a difference. Now, you know, a 15-year-old kid getting saved and believing on Jesus Christ is, how much, how awful could a 15-year-old be? However, for the depression that I was in, for the culture that I was in, for, for, for the situation that I was in, it was like the light shined within my heart so much so to where the things that I was taught, like for example, my stepmother used to used to tell teach me stuff that don't pick up your plate after dinner, your sister will, and uh, don't do your bed in the morning because your sister will do it. It was their way of training my sister for marriage, as awful as as that sounds, and it's just the Islamic culture. That's at least for my personal culture. I don't want to offend Muslims anywhere. However, that that's what we were taught, you know. In fact, Islamically, there's there's that debate, and that's probably another conversation for another time. However, when I got saved, I started helping my sister do the dishes, and I started helping with the housework, and I started doing. The th- I started letting my light shine without even knowing it. You were being and a servant sister, to others. Yes, I was acting like Jesus. And she said, I don't know what those Christians have done to you, but you tell them thank you, because whatever they have done, you're really nice now, and you're not the same brother I had a week ago. And so, I mean, that, uh, that was one situation. Another situation, a friend of the family came to the house, and he looked at me, and he said, what did you do? And I said, what do you mean? What I, I was paranoid. I thought he, uh, he knew I had become a Christian. And I said, uh, I said, what do you mean, what did I do? And he said, your face is, is glowing. He said, what did you do? And I, of course, I was too chicken to tell him I was a Christian because it wasn't time yet. But in due season, I would tell my family and I would tell the world. You know, I told my fa- my siblings one by one. Uh, it was kind of like a taboo situation. Nobody wanted to talk about it. I, when I felt the ability to speak to them one by one, I did. And amongst every, amongst all of them together, they were just too afraid to talk about it. Now it all culminated in at the age of 17, when uh, because of the war happening between the Palestinians and the and Israel, um, my father moved us back to America. We came to Florida. So I finished high school at the age of 17, 17 and a half. I left uh, in the name of college, and when I left home. That's when my father panicked, and he realized it's the first time I was actually not in his, within his arm's reach, you know. So he called me one day, and he said, two weeks after I was home, he said, Hazem, I need you to come home. I said, well, how come? Yeah, but he said, because yeah, yeah, no more college. You come work for the family. Do what you do. do you're no better than your brothers, because at the time, that's what my brothers were doing. And I said, I can't. It was the first time I ever spoke back to my dad. I said, I can't do that. And... You know, he, he, he was really not happy. He said, why can't you come back? I said, because I can't live the way you guys are living, and I can't live. I, can't, I just can't do the whole Islamic thing. And he got really mad, and he got really upset, and he 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 just, you know, natural reaction. He, he got angry and started cursing at me, and um, he told me, he said, if you're not home in 12 hours, you will never be welcome again, and you will never be a son of this family again. And that was 12 years ago. And he stuck to it. And, um, you know, at, at, here, 12 years later, I, I'm, I have one family member who speaks to me on the, in secrecy. And the, I'm number nine of 13. 
and they are they're all kind of they disowned me um but you have however, a new but you have a new family oh brother i trust me the lord has has given me grace it's not easy i'm not i'm not gonna act like it's it's just you know it, it goes away no it gets easier and uh the Lord provides more grace, and it's true people such as yourself and the church, the, the, the body of Christ who had kind of taken me in and loved me in place of my own blood family. So when Jesus says, who is my mother and who is my brother, I know exactly what that means, because I'd have to ask the same question. Who, who is my mother and who is my brother? And, and truly, it's those who, who do the will of our Father in heaven. And those for a Muslim, those are not just cliché, cool churchy christianese words no this is reality you know um so, uh, hazim I, i've only got about uh, a minute remaining i want to ask about your your tv program Re- reflections uh where is it seen uh and and how can people watch it yeah well um here in the west tv christian television is kind of you know it's been around a while and it's 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 familiar but in the middle east you know, I would much rather preach on television than go into the streets of Jerusalem and, uh, you know, get hurt or harmed. The Lord is reaching out to Muslims in five different ways. I'll give them to you real quick. Mm-hmm. One is dreams and visions. The second is miracles. People get prayed for in the name of Jesus and they get healed. The third one is relationships, kind of like how I got saved. The fourth one is uh, uh, internet. And the fifth one is Christian TV. So it's one of the five main ways now that Muslims are coming to know the Lord. So I had the uh, the wonderful opportunity to do the, to do reflections in English and in Arabic. In English, it airs in the in the Western Hemisphere uh, for just any anyone who understands and speaks English. And in the in the Middle East, uh, it's aired on three different channels, even uh, you know over uh, the cable stations. And the um, Lord just giving me real amazing favor. And, and what kind of responses are you getting uh, in Middle Eastern television with this program? I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, just three days ago, I got an, I got an amazing. I get two types of responses. One that says we hate you, we wish you, you know, you're an infidel, you should be killed, blah 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 blah. The hate mail, nothing real substantial. Like I mean, no more. It's just typical hate mail, you know, mm-hmm. no, no real crazy yeah. threat. However, I get the good letters too. I get the letter just three days ago. I got the letter that said, "Hello, I'm from Northern Iraq." Um, I saw Jesus in my dream, and he told me to follow him. Please tell me how to... Her own word, uh, he showed me that he was the king in heaven. Now, this is a person who's a Muslim, doesn't even know Christian lingo, you know, doesn't know the verses. And she says that in the dream, I found he was the way and the truth. You see what she meant, the truth. And no, I did. Jesus said, I am the way, and I am the truth, and I am the light. And Jesus appeared to this young uh, Muslim woman... Uh, yeah. In a dream, and I, I, we've heard these stories so many times, but this is really happening, isn't it, throughout the, yeah. the Islamic world? I'll be honest with you. If if I wasn't the one receiving some of these emails, I would I would kind of think, okay, maybe this is like uh, exaggeration. But no, these are real people, real emails, real life stories, and it's happening. We know Jesus as the healer. We know him as the savior. We know him as the master. But he's the evangelist too, and that's that's. That's a revelation that I got just getting these uh, responses from people in the Middle East through email. One one letter not too long ago, I, I asked, where are you from? And the, the guy said, I'm from uh, Mecca, Saudi Arabia. 99.999, you know, Muslim. In, in the birthplace of Islam, you know. Praise God. But the Holy so, Spirit, the Holy Spirit himself is going into into the homes of Muslims and entering into their their consciousness uh, during their sleeping time and and he's speaking to the Muslims and he's 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 leading them to the cross and it's a wonderful it's a wonderful uh, testimony of the love of God to reach out to everybody Hazim, uh, I'd love to have you back on in the future we'll continue I'd, I want to hear more about these dreams and and the healings that are taking place uh, my my guest today uh, Hazim Faraj and his uh, website is hazemfaraj.com. That's H-A-Z-E-M-F-A-R-R-A-J dot com. And the TV show is Reflections. Hazem, thank you. God bless you. Keep preaching the gospel. God bless you, my brother. Thank you.
Reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. You're listening to True News, the end time newscast.